A wind rose in the mountains of mist. The wind was not the beginning. There are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the wheel of time. But it was a beginning. That's got to be our first A tier. It's got to be. Rich, no. That's so good. No, Rich, that's an S tier. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Two to Ramble episode. I am one of your hosts, Austin. And I'm the better one, Richard. I'm the Eve, and we're not doing this. We always do this. I'm going to stop myself because we are tier ranking 40 fantasy book First lines, the best of the best, and maybe some of the worst of the worst, but I picked some classics. I picked some modern ones. I pandered to you, Richard, and I picked a lot of Discworld. Wonderful. I love it when you pander to me. Do you really? It makes me feel good. Really? When people give in to my own delusions, (laughs) it makes me feel more powerful, and I like it. Okay, I'll I'll keep that up. Do that more. (laughs) When I want to get something, you know, if I want you to increase your Red Rising ratings, do anything of the sort. That's what you need to do. Okay, I'll I'll do that because we have a tier list here of S, the top of the top. We have A tier, which is really great first line. Then we have B, C, D, F. I think people know how a tier list works. But here's what they don't know. Hmm. Because every Two to Ramble episode has a little special, you know, the bottom of the bottom tier. The one that nobody wants to be at. One time we had the Kenobi tier. Oh, what a bad show it was. One time we had the Rings of Power tier. Oh. And one time we had the Game of Thrones Season 8 tier. Oh. This time we have the Wheel of Time Season 1 tier. I'm not going to fight you on that one. (laughs) Folks, we're very very opinionated on this podcast. (laughs) Shows in general. But now we're going to be ranking all of these first lines from... Huge fantasy books. Most people have heard of and you've heard of. I even picked a couple here that are a little bit more niche and some people haven't heard of. And some lines really impressed me that I've never read before. All right. So these are a mix of stuff we've read and haven't read. And some of the first lines will be just one sentence. And then a couple other ones, I'll, go, I'll give them a paragraph, you know, a little breathing room. I understand. You're, you're, trying, to, you're trying to play favorites. I, I get it. absolutely am. And I have a couple favorites in here. And want to get started? Let's go. Okay. Let's go with the first one. Here we go. The very first one we're judging and ranking here. And this was in a random order. A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. What do you know about that book? Nothing. Okay. I see it in the bookstore all the time. All the time. And I haven't picked it up yet. It's so popular. Yeah. And does let's see if this first line captivates you, makes you want to read this book. Because I'm imagining for viewers, if they're and listeners, if they're listening and going, hmm, if one of these first lines actually gets you going, mm-hmm. go, go pick up the book and say, Tudor Ramble sent you to this random lady at the library, and she's going to go, who are they? Yeah. Most likely. Some nice, free, grassroots advertising for our channel. <laughs> That's how we should grow. And speaking of our channel, if you're interested in supporting us and joining our exclusive Discord book club where we talk about a book every month, go ahead, click the Patreon link down below in the description. It's a lot of fun talk with all of you. And supporting us. Very smooth, Richard. Very smooth. (laughs) Now, this first line in A Quarter Thorn Roses is, The forest had become a labyrinth of snow and ice. It's good. I'd say C. That was a very C reaction. Uh, Yeah, it's it's good. There's nothing particularly Uh, wrong with it. Right, we're not judging the pros of the entire book, because who knows? Exactly. But just based on the forest had become a labyrinth of snow and ice. What does that evoke out of you? Evoke? I mean, I <laughs> honestly, the big thing that comes to my mind is Narnia. Oh. Like, I, I just kind of see the Ice Queen I think, uh, for that. Okay. I I, I'm not against what you see. I think it's a very average opening line. It's yeah. not like, okay, so don't go to your librarian and say, pick up Thorn Roses. We're not, you know. We're not advocating for these not, books. Not, it sucks now. It's, it's a terrible. C. We, we it's ju- a C book based on its first line. <laughs> <laughs> we're judging the whole books now yes good so that i agree with you see so has the force had become a labyrinth of snow and ice yeah nothing wrong with it yeah there's yeah sure i'm sure it's great yeah okay see it's not as good as that first line you read to me a while ago oh of, yeah he shot he so, shot the woman no the, the white woman first yes Great a, first line. That first line, you're asking so many questions, and it was only, what, six words. Yeah, exactly. He shot the white woman first. What? What? Why did he? And why first? And why did you specify race? Who's after? Woman? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. White woman implies that there's probably other women of different 
races in the lineup, and yeah. he chose the white one for so. There's more women. So many questions. That's a great line. All this we're one, saying it's fine. is Sergey Mess didn't do it for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, the next one, this is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Okay, you ready for this opening line? Mm-hmm. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and having nothing to do. Once or twice, she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversation? Okay, I like this quite a bit, especially because it's a book. And it's a book talking, like, what's the point of a book without pictures or conversation? It, it's you know, also, yeah. To be fair, though, I think Alice in Wonderland, some of the original copies do have a lot of pictures in it. There, okay. there are more illustrated versions of that book, but still it's kind of funny and ironic to read. That's the first thing you read from it. To me, that's almost like the promise of that is what a younger reader may read that first line and agree with Alice and going, yeah, what is the purpose? But this book is going to answer that. This is the purpose of it. Yeah. So I like it. I'm I'm going with B. I was thinking B as well because this this very much I think it's written like the 1800s. Like Alice mm-hmm. in Wonderland's very well. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland is an old classic book, and it gives you that hearth feeling, the very comforting, welcoming, and it's a children's story. So the mm-hmm. prose is meant to be simple and grab you and intrigue the kid. And mm-hmm. I think it does its job yeah. because if we're judging prose, what do you think your standards are for? hey, this is a good opening line. What do you want to hit you in these future ones that will really wow you? Basically, the the gr- a great urge to read on. That's, oh, yeah. That's what the first line is supposed to do. Yeah. Set the tone and make me want to read more. Right now, on the spot, create a first line for a book. Let's see how creative Rich can get in the next five seconds. Okay, I got, I got I'm one. So, I'm so ready. I'm so <laughs> ready. The wolf normally chews on the femur first because it has the most meat. Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Set a tone. Why is, why is this the thing? For five seconds, I put that above Sir J. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, Rich. There you go. Hey. Follow my own advice of uh, tone and question. Tone and question. It's I think you got it spot on. Tone and question. That's what a first line should do. Yeah. The, this third book <laughs> is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Ooh, high expectations. Here we I, go. I've been wanting to read this book for a while. Let's see. Does, let's see if this grabs you, and makes you want to read it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Shadow had done three years in prison. He was big enough, and looked don't fuck me, don't fuck with me enough that his biggest problem was killing time. That's a good one. Ooh. That definitely sets tone. It sets tone, and I want to know more about shit. Like, oof. I'm I'm thinking somewhere like bottom A, top of B. I was going top of B in my inner monologue there. Okay. I'm fine with top of B for now. Okay, because it, you're asking some questions. Sets a great tone. Uh, yeah, it's Shadow had done three years in prison. He was big enough and looked, don't fuck with me enough. That his biggest problem was killing time. So it's introducing this character immediately. There's a grittiness to it. There's a hmm. There's also just a cool factor of mm-hmm. wh- who is this character? He, so, so in Killing Time, is it's setting up this badass character and then also kind of relaxed. Of, yeah. He's just trying to chillax. He's just trying to waste time. Yeah, I like it. A solid top of B. Top mm-hmm. of B for sure. Okay. This next one, Rich, this is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I've read the book. The Farseer Trilogy. Mm-hmm. You've read it. So you know the first... Do you remember what it was? It's probably a long time ago. It was probably. It was a while ago. <laughs> this is the opening line because I'm trying to pick some classics and some newer books and mix mm-hmm. them around. Uh, well, was, wasn't Assassin's Apprentice the 90s? Or, Here. Or, yeah. M- mind if I read this one? Oh, yeah. Go pick it up off the shelf, Richard. I Why can don't pick you? this off the shelf and okay. read the first line. Flip that one open. All right. I'm still very impressed by the wolf's femur thing. That was... Mm. <laughs> Actually... Good. Assassin's Apprentice was in my mind oh. for a second. All right. A history of the six duchies is a is of necessary. Oh, God, I'm going to try it again. Pulling a you. 
<laughs> a history I, I, before you go on i held myself back from making fun of you because i went no i cut you off at the pass um, i have to make fun of you first <laughs> before you make fun of me say the stupid line let's just a history of the six duchies is of necessity a history of its ruling families the farseers did you want to con we can continue no on? no that's that's a good Okay. Yeah, stop right there. That's that's the first sentence, right? Yeah. That's what I had down on my sheet okay. as well. Can I toss it? You know, it doesn't grab me that much. I'm sure it's a great book. I think it it, I think it's a good first line. It sets two things. Of one, it's yeah. about the nobility, its grandness of history. So you're getting a grand fantasy novel, which is going through the, the tone. necessity of the history of its ruling families. And I think the title of The Far Seers. Mm-hmm. Is enough of an interesting grab of like, that's a very specific name that I am curious on. Like, why are they called the Farseers? So I think it is adequate. It's, it's very good. I'll give you adequate. It didn't blow me away. Sure. It's uh, it definitely sets up. It's a hit. It sets your tone for your looking for. You're gonna get some world building. Yeah, I will say though, Robin Hobb is one of the greatest living authors. Uh, prose wise, prose and storytelling. She. She's fantastic. Oh, so. I'm sure the rest of the books were in phenomenal. Yeah. But would you agree with me with saying this is more of a C? I'll, I'll agree to top a C. Top I C. may even want to put it up to bottom of B. We'll have to argue vitriolically later. Mm -hmm. is, it, is vitriolic the, the word I was looking for? I've been trying to expand my vocab lately. I, I guess it, it's a word, yeah. Uh, 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 okay. The next one, this book now, The Black Tongue Thief. I like this book. By Christopher... Buhlman, did I say his name correctly? I'm sure Buhlman? I did. Yeah. Buhlman. You like this book? Hold on a minute. You want to try this as well? I want to try this oh, one. Oh, oh. Do I? Oh, right there I it got it on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The first line of the Black Tongue Thief, Richard. Give it to us. I know this one's good. Oh, it's very good. My God, there's a lot of pictures. All right. I was about to die. Worse. I was about to die with bastards. Not that I was afraid to die, but maybe who you die with is important. I, I got to give it like a, little, a little three here because it's like that stagnated yeah. yes. sentences. Oh, absolutely. And I'm, I'm cutting you off eight here. That's, <laughs> that's great. It's, that's so simple and effective, and I want to read it. Here's the thing. First line, like I was about to die. It's simple. Yeah, and I've I've seen it before. I like the thing that makes it really good is that second line. Worse, Worse I, I was, was about, about to, to die. Oh, with. I thought we were going the same time. Yeah, go do it again. Ready? Wor now you'd make me not want to do it. <laughs> it was like we were in sync. Worse, I was about to, to die, die with, with bastards. bastards. There you go. <laughs> so that does it for me. It gives you a good idea of who the character is. You got question of oh, okay. yeah. Kind of a gritty character, gritty world. Yep, yep. And some that the character values something more than life itself mm. and death. And so I like it. It's interesting. I wouldn't go that far. I don't think I'd put it A tier. I'd say in B. Give me top of B. I'll give you top of B. All right, top of B. Because that, as someone who hasn't read The Black Tongue Thief, mm -hmm. that line when I was writing this out made me want to read it. That got me In many good. ways, knowing your type of reading yeah. preferences, I think you would really like The Black Tongue Thief. It oh, has sure. a very similar uh, short staccato um, writing style that you like from Red Rising. Red so, Rising does a lot of, ch uses choppy sentences effectively in the pacing yeah. of the story. Black Tongue Thief does, does a lot of similar things that way. And I'd say it's it properly set that up with the first three sentences being cut, cut, cut. Mm -hmm. And fast paced, getting yeah. you in that action right away. It's he's also this was he's a horror author. Oh, and so this was his first fantasy book, and it shows he does a great horror, horrific descriptions of things. That's which is a lot of fun. sweet. Okay, kind of like a I don't don't know how comparable this is, but Peter Jackson filming Lord of the Rings. That was his first fantasy before he just did horror films. I know he's not an author, but he gave that horror aspect of Fellowship of the Ring where you got this really cool Peter mm -hmm. Jackson, uh, Peter Jackson Middle Earth that gave his sure. extra twang on it that 
made it more real and put it alive. So I, I'm sure he does a similar thing in Black Tongue Thief where he brings a unique horror aspect to the fantasy world. I wonder if that's... It's an interesting thing that I'm not a big fan of horror movies in general. Mm-hmm. It's not my favorite thing. However, I love like people like Sam Raimi. When he does... Like Ooh. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man yeah. is so... I just is it something about horror directors that like they have when they are doing horror movies they learn these certain techniques that maybe other directors don't pick up uh, because Sam Raby's one of my favorite directors out there just because yeah. of the camera shots are just so creative and fun and really get an emotion out of you. I wonder if that comes from the horror genre. So like I really enjoy the Black Tongue Thief. It's clearly because of the horror influences. Yeah. So I like the influence of horror, but not horror itself. <laughs> Maybe there's something to be said about someone who dives in. They're already a professional author, and they have mm-hmm. a great background in whatever they're doing, romance or thrillers or whatnot, and they dive into a new genre. Mm-hmm. To have a range like that is incredibly impressive. Because Stephen King, I think <clears throat> the most impressive thing about him is his range. Sure. Oh, well, and his speed. And it's quality. Probably just Range, all, speed, all of it. All yeah. of it is great to have, but the fact that Dark Tower, which we have yet to read, well, it's included in here. We'll read the first line from it. Mm-hmm. But maybe there's a there's a new spin that authors like Stephen King, when he's writing a fantasy book for the first time, when he does stuff like It and all this stuff in the past, and The Shining, but now he's doing a fantasy book, you bring a new, what is it? A new gravitas. A new, a new it, set a, of apples. It's a new angle. Yeah. Often genres have weaknesses so for example fantasy is typically known for not being great at romance and so it would be good to have a romance author go Mm -hmm. into the fantasy space and you fill you fill a hole where in in that genre that it is maybe with fantasy typically maybe doesn't do as good a description and getting that guttural emotion out of you Mm. but horror always does so I think that's just mo- mostly it's a fresh angle that you yeah. don't see often. Yeah, I agree with you. But are you calling fantasy authors nerds? Yes, of course they are. Like us. They're geeks. They're not nerds. Oh. Sci-fi authors are nerds. Hold on now. Hold on. Let's define, let's define our terms here. So we're defining nerd as what? School and intellectual smart. Okay, okay, okay. Mainly in terms of scientific inquiry, math, like that kind of intelligence. Geeks are fascinated with pop culture and are obsessed with superheroes, with fantasy. That that's so. What camp would you say we lie in? Both. We we kind of no. We're geeks. We're geeks over nerds. If between us two, yeah, I lean more nerd than you. You lean more geek than me, but we're both more geeks. Okay, and since we define, I think I agree with you. Yeah, I think I agree with you. We're on both it. mostly geeks. Like I you're have a little you're, bit of nerd in me. Right. You have a bit more geek. Like in you're me. a B tier nerd. I'm a C tier nerd. Sure. And then I'm a B tier geek. You're <laughs> C tier geek. Let's get back. Let's to math the, let's, this out. <laughs> <laughs> everything must have a system. <laughs> yep. Next book we have is The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. Okay. Do you want to pull it off the shelf and read it this time? I do have the it, it written right here. Do I? Wait, I know I got it. You got it somewhere, somewhere up here. There we go. Oh, okay. You want me to? Oh, let me pull this It's nice this to pull up. it off the it, shelf. It is nice. It's, it's nice in your hand. Okay. Because I, I skipped past the prologue in this one because I selected between the prologue and chapter ones, to, whichever one was more interesting is mm-hmm. what I started it with. And let's see what we got here. Um, oh. A lot of prologue. Yep, yep, yep. Pages, pages. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Logan plunged through the trees, bare feet slipping and sliding on the wet earth. The slush the wet pine needles, breath rasping in his chest, blood thumping in his head. He stumbled and sprawled onto his side, nearly cut his chest open with his own axe, lay there panting, peering through the shadowy forest. Real good. Good and effective. Good and good effective. Good and effective. Joe Abercrombie, we're giving you a, say it, Richard. A B. Yeah, we're giving a B. Well, we're sticklers, though. We're sticklers, okay? We're waiting to save those A's and S's because the A's and S's won't mean anything. If we're just giving them out all the time, like candy, okay? Yeah, no. Uh, a the A tier stands for a Discworld amazing. Book. Oh, 
I thought you were going to something else. <laughs> okay. So we're going beats here. Where are we going? Above Black? No, below Black Tongue Thief. Come on. Come on. Right below that guy. Right below that guy. Uh, fine. Yeah, all right. There we go. Oh, okay. There it goes. Next one we have is Aragon mm-hmm. by Christopher Paolini. Okay. Here we go. Wind howled through the night, carrying a scent that would change the world. A tall shade lifted his head and sniffed the air. He looked human except for his crimson hair and maroon eyes. Very solid. Solid. I would say solid. I, I think we're going to... Uh, bottom B. I was going to say bottom B because it's very solid. I, I haven't read Aragon myself. Um, I know it's more YA. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, if it's more YA, I'd definitely give it the B because it's hitting that tone. See, you read the line. Yeah. I don't know what you said. <laughs> I it. It went in one ear and out the other. I'll be honest. I I heard nothing. I think that's not a book. That's a you problem. It could be a me problem. Like, I know right, it well, was a good... Read it again for me because I don't remember let's run the back. line at all. Okay. And also, for listeners out there, let us know what your favorite line is, too, and if we if I missed one of them. Because I think I pulled up a good collection so far. I'm mm-hmm. gonna We're going to get to our desk world books, of course. I don't know what's yeah. But here it is. Again, you ready? I'm ready this time. Wind howled through the night. Carrying a scent that would change Richard forever. A tall shade. I was just seeing if you were listening. I was, uh, so you were listening. I was listening this oh, time. Making, okay, that wasn't the real thing. That would be a little weird. Okay. Wind howled through the night, carrying a scent that would change the world. A tall shade lifted his head and sniffed the air. He looked human, except for his crimson hair and maroon eyes. Now that I read it Bottom again, of the sea. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's put it above... Uh, Thorn, thorn, thorns of glass. Fine. Okay, right, right in between. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm All satisfied right. with that. Our next one. Oh boy, I'm re- okay. Before I say what the next one is, can I read it? No matter what it is. No, because I can, I can see the screen too. <laughs> no, <laughs> I can read. <laughs> All right, it's the Eye of the World, book What a Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. How much can I get this on just memory? Okay, on memory, I'll cr- I'll say the real one after you do it based on memory. Okay. Okay. Here we go. This is Richard off of memory. No, nothing's in front of you. I can promise you there's nothing on the screen Richard's yeah. looking at. Go ahead. He, he wouldn't let... He would catch me in that oh, lie. Yeah. All right. The wheel of time turns and ages come and pass. Um, an age once before... Um, shoot. You had I the, lost it. Uh, uh, yeah, you uh, had the rhythm. Go again. The, start it over. Start it over. Come on. I believe okay. in you. The wheel of time turns... And ages come and pass. And, uh, when legend fades to myth, myth fades. Uh, damn it, I forgot it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it hurts. It's, I've read the line so many times. You've read it so many times, but. Uh, okay. It, it, okay, go you ahead, you read it. <clears throat> the wheel of time turns, and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legends fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. In one age, called the third age by some, an age yet to come, an age long past, a wind rose in the mountains of mist. The wind was not the beginning. There are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the wheel of time, but it was a beginning. That's got to be our first A tier. It's got to be. Rich, no. That's so no, good. No, Rich, that's an S tier. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Listen, as much as everyone's seen on the channel, I'm the stickler for Wheel of Time. That's my thing. I'm a little downer. Rich, that's a great opener. <laughs> it's a great one. I'm not letting you get away with appeasing me with an A. I'm giving you the S on that. Thank you. Listen, it might not be top of S. There's better out there. But that is just... It gets you in the field. It's it's, it's a, so it's a fantastic opener. The big gravitas, like it's just Rich, you know, it sets the tone of exactly yes. what you're getting it's into. Going nice. Yeah, I love it. You know exactly what you're getting into. Some something about the prose there in that paragraph. You know, I don't love Robert Jordan's prose beyond like all you know some of the info. Them like that. Sure, we can talk when when we do our real time reviews. You can see that, but as an opener, mm-hmm. oh, that is crafted. It gives you the epicness and the scope of the world. The sentence structure. 
something about it makes you, uh, it, it gives you that, uh, I don't want to say Lord of the Rings feel, but just the... It's poetic rhythm. Po- yeah, the poetic rhythm and the epic grand scale. You're ready to... You, you read that first paragraph, you're like, all right, this is a 14-book-long series. Yeah. You're you're diving in. And the way it's written... Can, can, oh, the wheel time turns and ages come and past, leaving memories that become... Long. Oh, the poetic rhythm and the way it repeats words from the previous sentences. Which And is it reemphasizes going... The whole idea of the wheel, yes. exactly. So it's the whole, sen- the whole paragraph structure itself is reemphasizing what the wheel is. That's freaking mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Robert Jordan... Oh, Set, props to you on that. Not only I can't believe you said A. <laughs> you get exposed live on camera. But it, it sets a tone, but also has plenty of questions of you're instantly yeah. like, what is this world of the turning of the wheel of mm-hmm. time? It so you go, okay, this is a cyclical world where like the beginning and endings, like there instantly tons of questions. Totally with you. And I just love the ending of uh the wind the winds blew through the uh to the uh, mountains of mist. Well, so it was not a beginning. Yeah, yeah. There, there were are no, no beginnings or endings to the wheel of time, but it, but was, it was a beginning. beginning. Love Ooh, it. Love great. it. Yes. So good. And the kind of structure, fantastic, fantastic yep. opener. And now we're going to follow that up with Fourth Wing. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Which we I haven't d- even read the book. We we haven't, but we've seen it so much on Book Talk. Yeah. And we just know it gets memed a lot. We're going to have to read that eventually. Yeah. So Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. You ready for this? Because you've yep. never. Heard this first line before. I don't got this one on the shelf. Conscription day is always the deadliest. Maybe that's why the sunrise is especially beautiful this morning. Because I know it might be my last. Very, very, uh, I'm saying C. Yeah. I'm not even saying bottom C. I'd say above Aragon. I think so. Yeah. I remember it. The first time you read it, like it's, it's in the head. Yeah. Aragon went through my head. I don't know. I think that was just, you were like, eh, I'm done with Austin. <laughs> let's, just, <laughs> let's just shut him out for a couple seconds. You have a really strange thing where you can mute your ears at certain points of time. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I get through talk of you. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I don't think that's a, that's a solid opener. Yeah. Not, nothing else to add there. Of contri- it also gives you very much, I'm getting a, uh, the pro style I'm getting is like Maze Runner. I'm getting... Hunger, Hunger games. games. Yeah. YA type feel. Aragon type. It's very similar to the Aragon of, hey, conscription day is always the deadliest. That's why it's it's got that not, almost teenage angst. Here's the thing. it's It sets a tone that I've seen before. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. And it gives me a plot question. Like it's, mm-hmm. But it's a very over the head, like beating you over the head question of like conscription day. There's the, the plot thing to look at. And it's not as fun and playful as subtle. Like the fun thing with Wheel of Time one is it's setting you up and it's getting you to question the world. Not necessarily. It's not a plot start. It's a world starter. Right. With um, a lot of these other ones, Black Tongue Thief, it is a character starter. You're starting and you get to learn a little bit about the characters. A lot of the YA ones, normally it's like, Oh, a thing has happened, and here's what's going to happen next. I guess I'm more interested in the world and character starters than a specific plot starter. I see that. So you, your classics are going to be more your world starters, it seems like, rather than your, hey, your, your, maybe your first person point of view you like less because you're getting right in the character. Yeah. I, yeah. The thing is, I don't know how true that is. It's just a... Preference. I'm wondering if that's a preference yep. or just a pattern. That okay. I've seen. Well, this next one, <laughs> we're about to pull you back in, Rich. You ready? An- another rest here? <laughs> Maybe. It's uh, Going Postal by Terry Pratchett. This oh, is yeah. our next one, okay? And this is, this is, uh, well, this was a prologue, the 9,000th year prologue in Going Postal, okay? Mm-hmm. And I will say before I read this line, this is the worst of the four Discworld books. Not, no, not Discworld books, the worst opener, the worst opening line. Compared to the rest, All right. I st- we're it's starting one of my favorite discs. No, books, not period. not the book itself. I haven't read the book. I know. I'm just saying the opening line. It gets better after this. Okay. Okay. Here's what it is: the flotillas of the dead sailed around the world on underwater rivers. Lovely. <laughs> and that's it. that's the worst of them. It gets better, but that's still a great <laughs> opener. The flotillas of the dead sailed around the world on underwater rivers. Oh, it's fascinating. It's just poetic. It, it, the words flow together so well. It gives me questions about the world. 
I love it. Um, though I will say, I think, to be fair. Be fair now. This, it is Terry. It is our guy, Terry. Bottom of A. Maybe Th- top of B. There, there's nothing in A, so we'll just be A right now. I know. <laughs> but we'll push it down. I, I can uh, see it. I'm Yes, bottom of A. I think okay. a lot of things will go above it in A. Mm-hmm. But you got to give it the A. And I'm telling you, that is the worst of the four openers that yeah. I have. It. Okay, so here we go. The next one is A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. And again, so when I was picking the opening lines, I for this one, I picked. A, I skipped the prologue and picked chapter one. I picked the more iconic opener mm-hmm. because, you know, there's preludes, prologue, chapter ones. So this one for A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin is, The morning had dawned clear and cold with a crispness that hinted at the end of summer. I like it a lot. Yeah. It's sim- It's simple, classic. In, in many ways, it sets the opposite tone of what Game of Thrones really is. <laughs> oh. well, now, would you say but it, it's, it, it's reminiscent, reminiscent of like 1984's opener? Like the clock struck 13 and there was a... It, it describes the weather. It's a, that weather mm-hmm. opener of, oh, it's describing the clear and cold Christmas that hinted at the end of summer. Hmm. I just think it's well written. Yeah. It's, it's mostly just... Yeah, I don't know. Now, this, this goes against everything we were just talk, talking about of, oh, it should set the tone and it should leave you questions. This, I don't think, does either, but I still like it. You know what might be the reason we're thinking that is our our information, our preconceived information about Game of Thrones is we know there's plot twists mm-hmm. and we know it gets crazy. So maybe the reason the sentence works is it sets up that you think classical fantasy and the twists hit all the harder. You're like, oh, maybe, be, but may- I think it's also just well written. Well, yes, it's, yeah. The morning had dawned clear and cold with a Christmas that hinted at the end of summer. But let's not let our bias of what Game of Thrones is to influence the score because I don't think it's a worthy. Bottom B. Yeah, yeah. Bottom B. It's it's definitely good, but the book as a whole is obviously going to be mm-hmm. a lot different than the, just the opener. Mm-hmm. Go bottom of B. Okay, we're settling there. Fair enough. Because the next one we got is a banger. I'm giving my bias already. This one has been yeah. frequently commented when on our last video talking about best opening lines. Yeah, we had videos This like is that. frequently one of the comments mm-hmm. that kept popping up. This is Dark Tower, The Gunslinger by Stephen King, the Dark Tower series. Ready for this? Mm-hmm. The man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. Perfect. I'm, I'm honestly just going to go with S tier. The man in black fled across the desert, and the gunslinger followed. I love the gunslinger. One, the question. Man in black. Here's the question that I love that this sets up. Who is our protagonist? The man in the black or the gunslinger? You don't know. Well... Who who's the hunter? Who's the hunty? Well, like, the, I like the, the title would assume it's the gunslinger. <laughs> I eh, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get but you. But just from that first line alone, like if I'm not looking at the title of the book, yeah, I could be in either camp, and I love like who are we following? The hunted or the chased? Like, yeah, that's a good question. It so short and to the point. It does a lot. I love it. The man in black fled across the desert. And the gunslinger followed. I've heard it so much that maybe I'm mute to it at this point, but I think it is an S tier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just the, the excitement. I've heard the line so often quoted as a phenomenal opener that maybe mm-hmm. I'm just a, what, what is it? What's the what's the word I'm looking for? Numbed, uh, numb, numb to the greatness. Sure, but yeah, I'll, I'll go S tier with you because I think it is incredible. It's fantastic. And going back to Stephen King being one of those authors who this was his fantasy series. He he does it pretty much everything, every genre. How many books has he written, you think, at this point? I I think he's written more than Terry Pratchett himself. Maybe let's see. He has written it says over sixty five. My uh, it says all seventy five. It's sixty five to seventy five, depending on what you count. Yeah, that's more than Terry. It's a lot of books. Uh, that's a lot of books. Do and you those think, are thickum books. Do you think too. Sanderson will ever write more than Stephen King in his whole career? No, because Stephen King is still writing. But Sanderson's younger. Sanderson's forty-seven. He is, but Ho- hold I don't on think now. He has that. I'm seeing Sanderson has published a total of seventy-one books, including though short stories, novellas, and so forth. So it depends what you count. 
Sure. But full novels, it looks like it's 32. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe he'll overcome them. But I, for some reason, doubt it. There's also, since he's doing fantasy, he typically writes longer books. Yeah. And they're chonkers. Great chonkers. Go to your librarian and say you picked up White Kings from Tudor Ramble. That's, that's, we do approve that, for sure. We do approve of that book. All right, next one, we have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Mm-hmm. This one's by, have you ever heard, J.K. Ro- J. Hmm. Rowling? Ra- Ra- Ruling? Who is this person? I don't know, but here's the opening line. A little, right? uh, little no-name author? Yeah. She's, she's some, uh, she has some comments online or something. <laughs> All right, you ready for this? Yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. I love that line. I do too. I love that opener. I I the am, thank you very much at the end. It's uh, very great. Perfect way to it. do it. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four Privet Drive. We're proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. It's you know the sentence is wrong. They're you know, they're not normal. It's insinuate. You can read the way you say it out loud. Mm-hmm. It's written in such a way you know the way she intends you to say it and think mm-hmm. how it's supposed to be said. And that's a sign of well fantastically written line an opener there's a reason why it's like the most successful series ever yeah hook no. people immediately I, uh, I gotta say I gotta say S tier regardless of like uh, if you like I the Harry Potter I below Stephen King though <clears throat> okay. I put it below the gunslinger okay but yeah I I, I love this line I go back to chapter one of Harry Potter to read it and go like how to make a first chapter and just like the how to craft one um Regardless, I haven't even read the full Harry Potter books. It's just, there's a reason it's so successful. There's a reason it grabbed an audience. Mm-hmm. I, we're both with us here. Okay, I'll give you below, Gunslinger. But that's that's masterful. It's so good. Okay, you ready for the next one? Yep. Two back-to-back ones. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I wonder what our thoughts will be on this, folks. Ready for some controversy. Okay. Every time we read this, it's fantastic. You ready? Mm-hmm. In a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. Not a nasty, dirty, wet hole filled with the ends of worms and an oozy smell, nor yet a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or to eat. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. Oh! 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 I just want to curl up in, in a rocking chair next to a hearth. It's so good that I would even curl up relatively close to you, like several feet away. But sure. I would I would be okay being in the same room if that was read to me with you. Same room as me for recreation rather than mm. business. A yeah. giant wall in between us. Oh, okay. I, I'm I'm even more comfortable with just a physical partition of like a curtain. I didn't you know go far as a curtain. Hobbit's that good, I'll give you that. We'll do yeah. a curtain. Like one of those hospital curtains. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Let's let's do that. <laughs> so this is, I mean, where in S tier are we putting it? Oh, uh, so we're, it's, you know what? It's above Gunslinger. Is I it think, above Eye of the World? I think so. I think so as well. I think so. Now, I'm wondering how much of that is just my love for Tolkien. It's picking up on my nostalgia. But like, w- uh, as mm, it sets the perfect tone, it gives you so many, qu- it does everything you want. But Wheel of Time is your favorite series. Yeah, but here's the thing. Yeah. Different types of love. Okay. Wheel of Time is like most exciting and it's this complicated series of emotions where Lord of the Rings and The (laughs) Hobbit just give me this comfort feeling that nothing else does other than maybe Terry Pratchett. So it just (sighs) picks up on those comfort feelings. And that's different. I also got a hot take that's not really a hot take, but of mm. the Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit books, The Hobbit's my favorite. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Like, if we were to go Hobbit, Fellowship, Two Towers, Return, I think The Hobbit... Well, Hob- well Silmarillion is my favorite book. <laughs> <laughs> well, The History of Middle-Earth Part 4 <laughs> is my favorite book, as we're literally mocking ourselves, because <laughs> yeah, actually they're off screen. But I, I really enjoy The Silmarillion. Okay, wh- which is your favorite? The Hobbit, great. Fellowship, Two Towers, or Return of the King? Mine legitimately is The Hobbit. I think the two towers. Wow. Okay. I think so. 
it has not, not some... movie wise, book wise. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. movie wise, it's my least favorite. Uh, it's your Lord of the Rings right. movie. It's, it's the lowest ten out of the ten of Which, the tens. In They're all, all tens. honesty, yeah. that may be the reason why I dislike uh... the movie in comparison because it was my favorite book, and I feel like it's the movie that did the book worse. When you say dislike, you're saying it's a nine point five instead of a ten, of course, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I watched the extended edition <laughs> recently, and I was mildly upset. <laughs> <laughs> the books and movies are perfect. Stop it. <laughs> the Hobbit's also good. The, the book Hobbit's fantastic. Okay. I, I'll just say, <laughs> next time you watch like your extended edition Lord of the Rings movies. Yeah. So tomorrow. Extended edition Fellowship. Standard. Regular. Cinema cut. Two Towers, then extended edition of uh, Return of the King. And also that's the, the correct it, viewing. It also depends so much. We've watched Lord of the Rings together like, what twice now, f- fully. Yeah, like and then separately, I've watched it like another dozen times in you as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it depends who you're showing it with as well. Like, of course, watch all the extended editions if you're a super fan. You just want to watch all the stuff. That's always the correct recommendation. But I was showing it to someone who hasn't seen it for the first time. And for example, the Fellowship extended edition affects the tone affects the pace big time so it's better for a non-fan to go hey just watch the theatrical cut for fellowship to make them become an obsessive fan Mm -hmm. and adding those extra scenes like you know just watching the elves go back and frodo and sam having that scene that little extended cut scene isn't necessary for the plot and what the movie is doing but it's so great for all the book fans and for the huge lore fans and it's amazing but if you're trying to get someone in i would say you're you're right for the most part the cinema cut is the best version of the lord of the rings to the most people right to the large audience then when you get extended you're like Oh, yeah. Give me those extra scenes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're doing Hobbit top of S uh, above Eye of the so. World. I'll put it above Eye of the World. Yeah. it's It doesn't get much better than that. But maybe there is. There's actually a good Terry Pratchett book yeah, in there. Yeah. There's a Terry Pratchett one that had me die. Okay. 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 I'm excited. Here's the next one. This is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. Ooh. I like the Piranesi. author of Piranesi. Okay. Okay. I'm. I have You're, high expectations. For this one. Okay. Here's the, here's the opening line. Some years ago, there was in the city of York a society of magicians. They met upon the third Wednesday of every month and read each other long, dull papers upon the history of English magic. I really like it. I like it too. I like it. It, it gives uh, me uh, it gives me Pratchett vibes. Oh. Uh, the spe- the specificity the specific the specificity of specificity the specificity of saying they met wa- the third Wednesday of every month just yeah it's such a minutia detail that is purposely put in there obviously to make mm-hmm. it have that charm yeah the making it very trivial yeah. and mon- it it gives a sense of it being very mundane and, and emph- it's magic. yeah emphasizing the minutia mm-hmm. is what makes it spectacular yeah yeah oh, a i think top so. of a above going postal uh, behind He's, going postal well remember what going postal was it was great don't get me wrong but it was like the the underwater river gave some world building i think this one does a better tone i i think it just pulls you a little bit, a little bit. there's going to be more terry pratchett's trust me on this one Man, I feel just in such a forgiving mood wow. today. This yeah. is wonderful. Mm. Don't f- I don't feel very combative today. Oh, that's that's neat. <laughs> <laughs> this next one is a book that I had actually never heard of, but it was on a list of like, mm-hmm. hey, this this first line you should read. This is by Peter S. Bagel. It's called The Last Unicorn. Have you heard of this? No, actually. So this is here's here's the opening line. Very simple. The unicorn lived in a lilac wood, and she lived all alone. That's a good line. Solid B. Solid B. Solid B. I think we're putting this one at a, a below Joe Abercrombie's plate itself. I think so. I could see people putting it above it where we're we're guys that like action heavy books. I think we're gonna give an edge to Joe and that's our personal preference. Wait, did, could you say that again? You like action heavy books? Could I do like action books. I'm a guy. Oh. I like action books. Okay. It's just, good. Just you make fun of me for 
Yeah, because I say you only like action books. I say I like it as well. Right, right. There's a difference. Yeah, you're you're putting me in an archetype. Like exactly. <laughs> you're pigeonholing I'm, me. Exactly. I'm making you into a straw man. Right. Oh, exactly. The the funny thing is that you fit it more so than you should. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this next one is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch, Gentleman Bastards series. A great okay. book. The opening line is... By the way... Yeah. I, oh! As of recording... Oh, here we go! This is the book that we're doing for our book club of the month for November 2023. In our exclusive Patreon If you want to support that Richard that, already that, plugged, that, 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 that. you can't plug it twice I in a video. I can totally plug it twice. That's not... We can plug it as many times as we want. If we want to upload a video that's just <laughs> us saying over and over and over again, join our Patreon. Join For our an hour Patreon. and a half. We could totally do that. We have the complete freedom to do so. We do. We it's, can. I kind of just realized, like, you, you, you know when you just hit the age of five or six and you just have consciousness all of a sudden? Mm-hmm. And have, that's what that felt like right there. No, that, that's, the, that's the adult moment where you realize that you can buy birthday cake anytime you want. It doesn't have to be your birthday. Yeah. And yet you don't. No. But that option's there, always. I, for some reason, don't eat turkey other than Thanksgiving, which is a crime. Yeah, turkey's Oh, great. I have turkey bacon, but... Like, I never get a turkey other than... You could get turkeys whenever you want. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Why do we do that? It's a terrible thing to cook. It's hard to cook. Also, controversial take. Uh, Turkey is one of the worst meats. White meat. Dark dark meat turkey is good. But there's no flavor in turkey. Turkey tastes like nothing. The reason... So when you cook a whole turkey... All of the flavor drips out, and it tastes dry. It tastes bad. What you've got to do is all that flavor in the bottom is you turn that into a gravy, and then you put the flavor back on. So you're taking all the flavor that came out of the turkey and on back on top of the turkey. Well, yeah, you got to have turkey with gravy. I know, but I'm just saying anyone who's trying to come up with a recipe of, like, how do I make a flavorful turkey? Mm-hmm. You're not. You're not going to make a flavorful turkey. Don't try and like figure out a weird convoluted way. It's always going to taste dry and not that great. Just figure out how to make a really good gravy. Don't try and make a good I turkey. feel like we should have a Tudor Ramble cooking channel. We should. Comment down below. <laughs> Let's know. Oh, did I have you said the line of Lies Lock more yet? No, I didn't. No. Okay. No. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. Turkey. Okay, turkey. I'll get that on my head. Here we go. This is the line for Lies Lock more. At the height of the long, went, wet summer of the 70s... I'm going to start that over. This is a this is a tough one to read. Hold on now. Okay. <clears throat> Ready again? At the height of the long, went, wet summer of the 77th year of Sandovani, the thief master of Camor, paid a sudden and unannounced visit to the eyeless priest at the temple of Perilandro, desperately hoping to sell him the Lamora boy. As much as it was difficult to read at first, I like it. It's a little winded for me. It's it, yes, it's winded and hard to read, but I like the content of selling the Lamora boy and like get, obviously giving you a lot of names you're not supposed to know to mm-hmm. intrigue you on the the scope of it. Yeah, I like it. I just don't love it. That seems like a top of C thing. I think so. Well, I'll stick with you there because it was it didn't the the pro structure didn't like you know captivate and go boom boom partially because of my terrible reading but. Take that aside. Take that aside. Okay. This next one is uh, we're going to have a con- competition here to see where this goes in S tier. Mm-hmm. The Fellowship of the Ring by this guy, Jur Token. Jur, like two hours. Like Jur, like Burr. Like money goes Burr. Token goes Jur. <laughs> okay, I'm stupid. All right, ready for this? Mm-hmm. When Mr. Bilbo Baggins of Bag End announced that he would shortly be celebrating his 111st birthday with a party of special magnificence. There was much talk and excitement in Hobbiton. I think this is below Eye of the World. Oh. You're not going to believe me. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing I was thinking. It's real good. It, oh, it's, um, it's great. It, it's, like, it's hard to get better. But what gets me to like, I want to read on with Wheel of Time. It gives me a bit more questions where... This one, it sets a good tone. Well, I'll Not push, as good oh, as the no. I'll push back on that. Like, the questions it's asking The is, 11th first the birthday. 11th first. Why is he that old? 
Yeah. It's a it's a perfect opener line. We're just comparing perfection to other perfection. Exactly. I, mean, I just think now. tone wise. Yeah, yeah. The Hobbit sets it better. No, I think the Hobbit. I like the Hobbit's opener mm-hmm. better than Fellowship. I do. I think I, Eye I'll of the even, World gives uh, me I, that grand scope and far more questions to read on. I'll give you that. That's where I'm going. Like, okay, they're they're it's both great. they're both up there. They're yeah. both right there. Like, come on, when Mister Bill comes back, oh, oh. But yes, right below because something about the Eye of the World's opener and the not just the prose itself, but the the pattern. Mm-hmm. And the punch it gives at the end. It almost feels like a, that paragraph feels like a complete story. It's, it's so re- good that he kept putting it as first line of all of his books. That's <laughs> true. Every Everyone opens like Which, that. He's like, again, not, he's, <laughs> ties into it's a wheel. Yes. It makes sense. And he's, I, I can imagine, <laughs> I can imagine Robert Jordan like sitting there. He wrote that went, that's the best line I've written. <laughs> you know. The, run it back. Run it back. I, I ain't using it just once. It's right. the best thing. He marveled it. Phase six. Let's go. Phase Do seven. Do it again. Pump these out, VFX <laughs> artists. Work overtime. <laughs> uh, we're going right below. Yeah, S tier right below either world. Yeah. And Buff Gunslinger. F- phenomenal. Mm-hmm. This next one we have is a book we both have not read, but are going to after the Wheel of Time. Yeah. Malazan. I'm, you said it correctly. You said it like a book reader. I are you saying I don't read but No no no. I'm just yeah. saying most people say Malazan if you haven't read the book before, which we haven't. So like, that's how I normally hear it is Malazan. That's how I'd look at it. Yeah. But it's Malazan. Oh, okay. You're right. I was gonna say. It sounds worse. The the actual correct pronunciation of it is worse than how me people mispronounce it. <laughs> I prefer the mispronounced version, but Anyway. It's with a lot of things, actually, because you kind of get stuck in your ways of how a character name is, and then you hear yeah. it in an audiobook, and you're like, that's not right, but it yeah. is. I, yeah. I got that with a couple Stormlight characters. Oh, same. Like Shallan versus Shallan versus Shalit, and then Adeline versus uh, Yesna versus Jesna, and... Oh, yeah. 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 So there, there's different ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the slide. this is Gardens of the Moon, book one of the Malizan Book of the Fallen. <laughs> The stains of rust seem to map blood seas on the black, pocked surface of Mox Vein. A century old, it squatted on the point of an old pike that had been bolted to the outer top of the hold's wall. Monstrous and misshapen, it had been cold hammered into the form of a winged demon, teeth bared in a leering grin, and was tugged and buffeted in squealing protest with every gust of wind. Very visually descriptive. I think... Very easy to visualize, right? You agree with me? Like You could really visualize it. I think it belongs in A. I would say bottom of A, but I agree with A. Yeah. Let's go, go, go below Terry on that one. Because I'm going like, is it better than Black Tongue Thief? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so it, Yes. Like right off my gut reaction is better than Black Tongue Thief. Okay. That's better described where I, I, I see that image perfectly. It gives me enough questions. It sets a great tone. It does all that stuff. Very descriptive. It, it, that is the key point of that paragraph is to key you in and be like, hey, this is a story all about how my life turned twisted upside down. I got, okay, we're going to get copyrighted this whole entire thing. Ready? Next one is... Well, mm-hmm. for us to get copyrighted, you would have to sing it correctly and be on key. This one's by John Gwynn. John, hey, shout out to the... Uh, the Gwen a- brothers. Adam Will. Huh? The second best duo on YouTube. <laughs> They're great. We, we, we need to have them on again soon. Yeah. yeah. Gotta do something. Yeah. We should talk about their dad's work. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be a fun little, <laughs> Wait, little Rambler, debate. Wait, Rambler <laughs> rating of their dad's work in front of them. Oh. Like, now, here's where your dad did wrong. Okay. <laughs> you, you here's where this? your dad kind of sucks at writing. Yeah. The, uh, for those who don't know, the Gwyn brothers are booktubers like us. Yeah. They, they go and they talk books and they have their own channel. Their dad literally wrote this book. It's mm-hmm. behind, uh, right, uh, right over there. there. Yeah, right there on the yeah. bookshelf. That'd be hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> like you love the book, but you just only talked about the bad things. Yeah, here's why he's not good as, as good as Tolkien. Okay, <laughs> I, I I gotta do it. I'm sorry. Also, in our <laughs> exclusive oh, Discord God. Patreon, oh. we have our community oh. book club, which is actually doing this series a whole read through, and they're doing a book club on it all, just about every other month. 
third time. Money! <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to see how many I can fit in. <laughs> the, so this is Malice by John Gwynn. Here's the opening line. Ready? Mm-hmm. Forest litter crunched under Evnes's feet, his breath misting as he whispered a curse. He swallowed his mouth dry. I, I know exactly what you're going to say here. We're going right before, right below Joe Abercrombie. Hmm. I was going to say bottom of B, personally. Oh, Game of Thrones. Is already, okay, yeah, let's go below Game of Thrones. Is, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, I agree with you. But very visual Good description. I, I'm. I don't think it has as much of the, you know, the questions. I'm, I'm not as excited to read on after that first line. I, I'll give you as that. Others. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is this next one we have is Terry? Oh yeah, Pratchett. Men at Arms. Discworld number fifteen. I haven't read this one actually. I picked two that you actually, haven't read. I bought it. I recently bought it. There it is. Yeah. I picked some you haven't read, so you hear these first lines for the mm-hmm. first time. Okay. This one is Corporal Carrot. Ankh Mork Pork, city guard of the Night Watch, sat down in his nightshirt, took up his pencil, sucked the end for a moment, and then wrote, Dearest Mum and Dad, well, here is another fine turnip for the books, for I have made corporal. It means another five dollars a month, plus also I have a new jerkin with two stripes as well, and a new copper badge. It is a great responsibility. Now, okay. I know Carrot. So Carrot's from a diff- another Discworld book. Okay. And I love... I love... It. So, on its own, very good. In the context of I know Carrot, the character, I love it even more. It's like, yeah, Carrot, you're doing good for yourself. And it's just that incredibly dumb optimism that's just so endearing. So what are we going to do with this information here? Bottom of A? Yeah. Bottom of I'll a- give you that bottom of A. Bottom of A. I'm feeling you with that because it's it really gets you there. It gets mm-hmm. it gives you that character's tone and the jovialness and the whimsy of Discworld. It doesn't give you as much of like the questioning of what's going on. It just gi- it gives you the a further insight of to one of the main characters. And you just get you in, instantly get the tone of the book, and you instantly get oh, who is this character? Because like the yeah, hey, I got a five dollar a month raise. <laughs> yeah, but <Yippee-doo. laughs> this is everything's looking up. Richard raised my editing price. <laughs> I got another five cents in my pocket. Well, I mean, you got another box of pasta. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll raise you another. You get Let me another out of box of a uh, penne. <laughs> I get one penny. No, a singular penny. A singular penny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going bottom A for that. Yeah. You ready for the next one? No. What? No. What do you? What do you mean? Tune back in. Same Rambler time. Same Rambler channel. Next week. Wait. So we're gonna do a part two next week. Yeah. Okay.